Hey everyone, my name is Bo and I like tech stuff. Today, we're going to be learning how to put the new Raspberry Pi 3 A Plus into gadget mode so that we can do things like SSH into it and power it all over a single USB cable. Here's what we need to get started. Obviously, we need a Raspberry Pi A Plus with a micro SD card and a micro SD card adapter so that you can put the micro SD card into your computer. Next, we'll need a USB A to A cable. These aren't terribly common, so you may need to buy one on Amazon or eBay. I already had one because I bought this hard drive enclosure that happened to come with one. And I was like, nice. Nice. And then we will need a computer to actually do the steps in this tutorial. Step one is to download and write the Raspbian image to the micro SD card. Make sure to download the latest version of Raspbian from raspberrypi.org slash downloads slash Raspbian. I chose Raspbian Lite because I do not need a desktop. I don't need the GUI and I'm not going to access it that way. If you do, you can use one of these instead. My favorite program to write the image to the micro SD card is called Etcher. Etcher is a GUI program that works on Windows, Mac, and Linux and is extremely easy to use. So first we're going to select our image after it's downloaded and has been extracted. I've already plugged in my micro SD card so I can hit flash. Once Etcher is done, let's take out the SD card and put it back in. When we do that, we should have a partition show up called boot. From here, we have two files that we need to edit and one more that we need to add. I'd recommend using Notepad++ if you are using Windows. If you're using macOS or Linux, you can use whatever your favorite text editor is. Let's start with the command line. For this one, we need to add a line of text that I'm going to copy and paste because I don't want to fat finger it. And it has to go in between, it has to go after this root weight part, otherwise it will not work. Save that. Config. For this one, we can just add it down a couple lines and it has to be this exactly. Again, copying and pasting. All of this will be in the description as always. On the Raspberry Pi Zero, we don't need this part because it is OTG. However, because the Raspberry Pi A Plus is not, we have to specify and tell it that it is being gonna act as a peripheral. So we're going to put the dual role mode as peripheral. So let's hit save on that one. The next thing we have to do is create a new file called SSH. And we don't want it to have that .txt extension. If you don't see the extensions and you want to view those, you can go to view and then file name extensions and make sure to check that box. And that way you can know that that SSH file does not have that extension on it. After that, let's eject. And then from there, we can take out the micro SD card and plug it into our Raspberry Pi 3A Plus. And then we'll plug that into the computer and it should take around a minute and a half to boot up all the way. And when it's boot up, we'll see it pop up. Oh, there it goes right here. Um, it's still booting up, enabled. And it should come up with this RNDIS gadget. I like to call it RUNDIS because I think that's fun to say. Uh, but that stands for Remote Network Driver Interface Specification, which I believe is a Microsoft specific whatever. And then from there, we can 
see if it's up. Ping raspberry pi.local. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, it did come up, but it did come up with a self-assigned IP, and that's okay for now. Um, the point is that it came up with this. If you do not get a ping back from Raspberry Pi dot local, that means that you need to install QuickTime or iTunes. Basically, you need the Bonjour service running on your computer for that to run. This took me a little bit to get it to work for a couple reasons. I already had QuickTime installed, but for whatever reason, the Bonjour service was not running. Um, when I tried to install the Bonjour service manually, um, it did not, for whatever reason, it just wasn't working. And when I tried installing iTunes, they wanted you to install it from the Microsoft Store, which I don't think comes with the Bonjour service. So what I ended up having to do is install an older version of iTunes to get that to work. And um, I left a link for that in the description for older versions of iTunes. So from here, we can then put in raspberry pi dot local and port 22 just default. Shoot, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Um, and then that's our SH key, we hit yes. We'll log in as Pi, and then Raspberry is the password. Oops. There we go. And then from here, we are logged into our Raspberry Pi. But as you can see, if we try and ping Google or something like that, it will not work. So what we're gonna do is go to our main internet connection and then we'll do properties, sharing, allow other users, and then mine is ethernet five. It, it, I think it's ethernet five on, on most devices, but it could be something else. Just find the RNDIS gadget and then hit okay. At this point, you will probably lose your SSH connection. And I believe that's because when we share it, it starts getting a normal IP address instead of that self-assigned. So let, let's try that again. Raspberry Pi dot local. Nice. Pi, Raspberry, and then here we are. Let's see. Yep, it, it, it got a normal ish IP address instead of the self assign. So that's good. And then now, hopefully, we can ping Google. Nice. Cool. We got everything working. So that's all you need to get started using gadget mode on your Raspberry Pi A. Thanks for watching guys. I had fun making this video, so I hope you enjoyed it too, and I'll see you guys next time.